7 to the 11. So please make sure that you're low, that you're okay. So why Can everyone hear me okay? No. Can everyone hear me? Okay, I can hear myself. Um, hi, I'm Isabella. I'm one of the um, categorical PGY1 Gen Surge residents. Um, nice to meet everyone. Um, so this, if you can see my mouse, this is a picture of a scooter trip I took last week. Some of my co-interns know about this. Um, I thought it was funny to kind of show, and I also think it really encapsulates my life. Um, I was also an English minor in college, so I like for things to have themes, and the theme of mine is detours, hence this picture. Um, on that note, this is me sketchily earning my medical degree. Um, this is me also getting lost in translation effectively. I was in Japan over the summer with my parents. And this is me preparing for this talk as a small child. <laughs> um, so my first detour occurred in um, when I was two years old, uh, around this age. Um, I moved from LA to Orange County. Um, my parents split up when I was two, they divorced. Um, and uh, they, yeah. <laughs> um, this is pictures of me from when I was a kid, uh, but up to a lot of antics by myself mostly. Um, this is a picture of my dad, which is kind of over it all, um, possibly from the stuff that's going on. He was actually in the middle of family medicine residency, which explains his posture. I now relate to this like a hundred times over. Um, this is a picture of my mom. So my parents met in LA. Uh, my dad was in family medicine residency, had just left the Navy. Um, my mom had just immigrated from the Philippines. Um, she got her medical degree over there and was trying to become a doctor in the States. Um, so she ended up taking custody of me, raising me as a single mom, sending me to Catholic school, surprisingly, all of these years, even Catholic medical school. Um, and these are a picture of my younger brother and sister who were born three years after me. Um, and I spent a little bit of time away from as a kid, but eventually got to be reunited with, as you'll see. Um, my second major detour um, came when I was nine. So my mom ended up getting a residency spot in New York City, um, hence us visiting her. This is my uncle. Um, I moved to the Philippines while she did that, and I lived there for three years. So... This is a picture of our house in the Philippines. I was just back recently, so I just took this photo. Um, this is me on a more recent visit. Here's a picture of the beach, which is what you think of when you see the Philippines. This is not what it looked like where I lived. Um, this is one of my ancestors, probably. Um, <laughs> here's uh, some wildlife. I rescued a lot of stray cats while I was in the Philippines, less stray cows. Um, this is my grandfather. So when I was there, I lived with my grandparents. Um, this is my grandfather celebrating his 90th birthday. Um, he plays a lot of golf. That's a golf themed cake. He drinks a lot of wine. <laughs> um, this is my grandma 28 years ago. That's me, I think. And this is her today. Um, and that's my uncle who helped raise me as a kid. He's also a really good golfer. That's him and his golf cart. I also played golf. I did not win any awards. Um, my third detour came in um, like middle school, early high school. I moved to Seattle from the Philippines. I came there to live with my aunts. Um, and also my mom did a fellowship out there for geriatric psychiatry. So we spent some time. This is what it looks like up there. If any of you have never been, it's really, really nice. It's beautiful. Um, and these are just pictures of my family out in Seattle. Um, everyone from my mom's side basically lives up there. These are all my aunts. They're 
both in medicine, they're in nursing, um, a lot of medicine in my family. Um, this is them raising me as a kid. So they've basically been there throughout my whole life. Um, and they've always just been like a great source of support and camaraderie and cheer. We like to laugh. Um, yeah. Uh, detour four, five, I can't remember, um, was to Sacramento. I moved there with my mom after Seattle. Um, if any of you haven't seen this movie, Lady Bird, it's a very excellent film because it relates strongly to my life. Um, I actually attended the same high school that she did for like six months before transferring to a different one that closed, unfortunately, probably my fault. Um, <laughs> these are my, this is my stepdad. This is my mom. They met in New York. Um, there's a picture of my stepdad. He's very goofy. This is my favorite one. He's just standing at the speaker's podium at my white coat ceremony <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> um, this is both of them at my graduation. Um, my mom is a psychiatrist now. I maybe I've mentioned that, but she's hoping to retire soon. And I think this is her thinking about that. Um, they both live in Sacramento still with four cats. They are all pictured, one, two, three, four. And they like to travel a lot. Um, this is what the average trip with them is like, lots and lots of selfies. So after Sacramento, my high school closed in Sacramento. So I ended up moving back to LA to live with my dad, my brother and sister. This is our typical Southern California childhood beach picture. And this is us all grown up. My brother now lives in Madison, Wisconsin, and my sister is out in Santa Cruz, California. Um, these are my, this is my dad and my stepmom. Um, both are family medicine. My dad's since retired. Uh, that's why he's so happy in this picture. And my mom is still practicing in South LA. Um, she is actually probably my major inspiration, despite all the medicine in my family, to do medicine. Um, just the kind of patient care she gives her patients is super inspiring to me. Um, that's why I chose surgery, I guess. Um, this is us on a ski trip. I know lots of you guys like to ski. We do too. This is um, my best friend from high school holding one of our chickens that we started raising. We're a very, we're like the weird family on the block in LA. Um, nobody likes us. <laughs> we're not cool. Um, this is my grandma, just some more family pictures of us on different trips. Um, like to travel a lot together. They're big on RVs, my parents. Um, and these are our dogs. Guinness has since passed away, but Rosie's still around. There are many Australian shepherds. They're very noisy. Um, so I went to Davis for undergrad. This is a picture of me earning my English minor. Um, this is some of the antics I got up to in Davis. I wanted to be an anthropology major for a while, so I took a lot of those classes. I also wanted to be a vet, so I took some vet classes. Got into fitness, ran my only and never again half marathon. Um, this is one of my best friends from college who I just saw recently in Chicago. Um, after undergrad, I worked for two years in um, biotech. I signed an NDI, so I can't show a lot of like useful photos, um, but these are some of the things that we did. Um, it involved a lot of like, it was a startup company, so it involved a lot of work on the fly and staring off into space and pondering your choices. Um, and this is me earning my medical assisting degree, something I did on the side in Davis. I did a lot of volunteer work at hospitals too while I was there. So I am trained in phlebotomy. Um, the nurses don't know that yet. And <laughs> Davis, the topic of Davis brings me to my partner, Brady's son. Um, so he's actually at UC Davis um, doing his prelim year in general surgery. So I just threw this up there for <laughs> anyone <laughs> contemplating. <laughs> Here's him <laughs> surgerizing a piece of pig. <laughs> um, this is where apps went wrong, I think. <laughs> um, that's our cat, Ollie. And these are just pictures of him and I doing different things. He likes to do sports to the point of failure. Uh, he likes to cook and eat. Um, we host Thanksgiving every year in med school. We did that for a while, which is really fun. Um, and yeah, so he's a great cat dad when he's around. Um, so Chicago was my detour number eight, nine, I don't know. Um, this is, I moved in to Chicago in 2017. I got a master's degree in medical physiology. This is a picture of my grad school class. There's Brady in the background at the bar oblivious. <laughs> um, this is one of my um, grad school classmates at our med school white coat ceremony, which was really cool um, that we got to like have that trajectory together. Um, in between grad school and med school, I worked at a hospital called Mount Sinai Hospital in Westside, Chicago. Um, super proud of having worked there. It's just an amazing place to be. It's like the most decrepit hospital you'll ever see in your life. Um, but the people who work there are really inspiring. 
Um, I did med school like everyone, did it virtually, also in person. It's me and family med clinic, very sad. Um, I did some research in med school too. Uh, we actually did some interesting research on um, surgical outcomes and um, residents, residents at the VA. Um, so that was a fun project. Uh, these are some of my research mentors and um, clinical mentors. I love when surgeons post photos of people you have no idea about and I tried to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are just more photos of my time in med school, did some community outreach stuff, made some more friends. Yeah. Oh, I also took up yoga, which is great for mental health and back pain. If you have both or either, highly recommend. And this is my last detour, Minneapolis. This is not Minneapolis. This is the view from the bullet train in Japan um, that I went to over the summer. <laughs> Um, this is my view in Minneapolis right now on nights. Um, the escape button does not work the way you think it does, just for reference. Um, so I guess just to kind of tie things together, speaking of themes, um, I guess what life has kind of taught me and what I just kind of want to dump on you in like my five minute spiel is um, like my life has been kind of all over the place, but it's never really been about point A to point B. Um, I feel like sometimes it's kind of random that I ended up in Minnesota from California, like lots of fellows have been asking me about my area code. Um, but it's about the journey and the people you meet on the way and the surprises like baby turkeys <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Welcome, Dr. Ivakowitz. Now is it working? Oh, okay, it's working. Um, hello, um, currently on Regions Night, so it's nice to see everyone during the day. <laughs> um, there was a nice picture of a sunset here, but that's okay. So anyways, this is me, um, Ross Rybakowitz. The last name looks a lot scarier than it actually is. Um, on the left are both my parents, uh, my dad and mom. And on the right is my lovely girlfriend who so happily worked a couple extra 24 hour shifts so she could take a red eye and come here for her, for our match day, or for my match day celebration um, that we had. And so just a couple fun facts. So as you can tell from my last name, it is very Polish. Um, Reba in Polish means fish. And as some of you know, I was born with um, three or an extra set of upper teeth, just like a shark, uh, which is why I've included this photo. Um, they were my baby teeth followed by weird, like sharp shark teeth. That's how my, I was apparently described. Um, and then my adult teeth have, have came in. So like Isabella, there's a kind of a current theme of water and aquatics and other things. Um, so walking around the hospital, you will probably see me in a couple um, shark scrub caps. I'm trying to collect as many as I can throughout my time here. So moving on to childhood. Um, sadly, this photo on the left is photoshopped, um, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, I think there was like a bouncy ball or something underneath it, but I'm not really sure. My dad was a pretty avid skier. Um, he actually lived in Utah for some of his life. He was a teaching um, ski instructor at Alta. Um, he taught a good amount of people, including myself. Um, my hometown is Greenfield, Wisconsin, which is just a suburb of Milwaukee. And kind of going back to the left picture, left picture um, actually did take it really advantage or I took a lot about myself from that picture because I ended up breaking my leg skiing actually in Utah. Um, so as you can see, the wild child really was my kind of my downfall as a seven year old. So kind of back to the aquatics um, theme. So the journey begins. Um, I was a swimmer for 15 years of my life. Um, the left picture was my first and last open water swim. 
um, actually went off course and had to be rescued by the, <laughs> the lifeguards. And they finally found me after a much too long swim. So they knew something was up because I was not coming back and all the other swimmers were already in. Um, on the right picture was the first club I joined. Uh, my parents kind of threw me into swim lessons because I was a pretty active child um, and just wanted to get some energy out. And also it was a little two birds with one stone because it was just safety. So, man, I'm not sure where this middle picture is from, but just another picture of myself. My hair used to be very blonde and yellow. <laughs> um, and so swimming actually took me, you know, across the continental US, um, all the way from California to um, some parts of Florida. And if you look in the top left, that's actually Minnesota's pool. And uh, the bottom left is a picture with the Michael Phelps, who was also at that meet that I was at. A couple other big names like Ryan Lochte were there and some other um, swimmers that people probably only know if they are in the community. Um, the, bottom pic the bottom middle picture is a bunch of my um, co-team, my teammates that all swam in college. Um, and that was kind of the next team I joined when I got a little bit more serious about swimming. Um, I have your national picture and a picture from when I was interviewed for one of my high school teams as a senior, believe it or not, that prepubescent face is actually a senior in high school. Um, moving on. So the big question, oh, this is where I want to play the link by chance. So the big question was kind of where I would want to go swimming in college. Um, I took a couple recruiting trips. I took one to Denison University, which was um, kind of a small D3 school that was very beautiful and they had a great program, but I think it was just a little too small for me. I took another recruiting trip to West Virginia University, um, which is a much bigger school that my parents did not approve of because they burned couches there, which my mom made Evan, uh, very clear that I was not allowed to go there. And then I took a final recruiting trip to Miami University and I thought it would just be fitting to kind of play this clip because this kind of describes the whole where I went to college and geographic wise. Kelly Kapoor is gone. Her fiance, Robbie, was hired as a pediatrics professor at Miami University. I don't need him anymore. I am going to Miami, Beatrice. Hey, LeBron James and Gloria Stefan. Miami University in Ohio. <laughs> I'm so confused about. Enjoy this now, losers. I'm so happy for you, Kelly. <laughs> Shortly after Kelly left. So there was a little shout out. Sorry. Um, that I it, that was always like the the joke or the running joke um, about where I went to college. A lot of people in medical school. When I came, they were like, where's your tan? And I said, um, you know, it's, it's Ohio, so normally it's a tan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One <laughs> second. <laughs> um, but I can go on. So when I got to my <laughs> when I got to Miami, there was there we go. So this was me on signing day, and basically I kind of went here. Just I was recruited here. It was a great program, um, pretty close by to school to my hometown. It was six hours away, and I mean they had a very beautiful pool, so I could not really deny that. Um, I was a biology major and a neuroscience minor. Um, these were some pictures throughout my time competing. Um, the left is a sophomore year picture, junior year picture in the top right is a senior year at my last swim meet ever. Um, but more so than just swimming at Miami, I actually did do some other things. Um, I was part of a membership council for all the athletes that kind of did some community outreach programs, set up food drives, got more school involved in athletics and kind of just increased school spirit all around. Um, you can see here, we kind of teamed up with the volleyball team here. Um, to the right, I did some research just in a basic science lab for two years. I was pretty involved, I believe the sophomore to junior year summer. And then in the middle here, which is what I'm most proud of, um, there was a bagel challenge that if you ate um, every single bagel on the menu, you got a picture on the wall, which I had to have a pic my picture on the wall. So. Naturally, there were 90 bagels. Yes, some were uh, not appetizing, but I did it. And this is forever there. So I'm really excited about that. So I moved on to medical school, went back home to Medical College of Wisconsin. Um, this picture makes me laugh because now I have a, I was so excited to get this pager when I was an M3 and now it keeps me up. 
literally at night all the time. Um, this is my lovely grandma here taking on um, white coat ceremony day. And then this is also from M3 um, on my surgery rotation. I always knew that kind of surgery was in the background. Um, I kind of did some shadowing, you know, the first couple of years in fields that I had really never heard of, like urology, radiation oncology. Um, but I always knew that I kind of wanted to do surgery. Originally, I actually wanted to do neurosurgery, but then I realized that I kind of wanted to talk to my patients a little bit more. Um, so here again is me on my surgery rotation, a couple of my good friends that graduated. And then I also met um, Danielle in, in medical school. So at MCW, you get a big sib. So when I was an M1, she was an M2. Um, you kind of get paired by where you went to college. She went to University of Miami and I went to Miami University. The classic mix-up strikes again, but it worked out in our favor. Um, this is her at her Arizona apartment. She's currently a PGY2 OBGYN resident in Phoenix. And then also during M4 year, I was able to attend a wedding for some of my classmates in beautiful Sacramento, California. So currently some research interests that I have um, are surgical oncology transplant, um, looking at clinical outcomes and quality improvement. And because of my kind of, um, you know, experiences in being in a team environment, I really do value also medical student and residency education and just the power of mentorship. So I know I couldn't have gotten to this place without the mentors that I've had throughout my life. Um, here's a group of us presenting at ACS. And then I just had to kind of include this photo um, last year was at Houston. And this was the five pound um, kind of meat plate that we got. And obviously I had to post a finished picture where we ate everything. So moving, yeah, except the vegetables. <laughs> Um, moving on to out of the hospital activities. Um, I really do enjoy the nature and um, again, being by a body of water. This is me in Portland, Maine. Um, this hike was in Sabino Canyon in Tucson. And then this hike was also, um, this is Piestoa Peak in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, actually a really cool thing about this, this guy right here, um, he has climbed up the mountain every single day for the last like three years. And he brings up a big drum. Um, a wooden or like a wind, I think it's it's like a wooden flute and wind chimes and does this like ceremony every single every single morning at sunrise. So that was really cool. I didn't even know that was going to happen, but if you ever there, um, this is another hike that I did, which I definitely show my parents afterward. Um, I still do like to swim and do water activities, but at a much more leisurely leisurely pace. Um, this was Danny and I in Chicago, like what or using a kayak on the Chicago River. A couple of my friends, and then just this was in Manitowish, which is pretty close to here. I think it's about maybe an hour or two away. Um, additionally, I like going to live music. Um, this is a couple of us at a jazz bar in Cincinnati. Um, this was at the, um, if anyone knows who Camp is, this was Glass Animals. Can't remember who this was. And then this was, I was really proud of this. This, um, one of my favorite artists, tourists, he posted a picture on his Instagram and I made the cut. I was very proud of myself for that. Um, moving on, uh, me and my girlfriend really like to watch movies. Um, so I have this scratch off top 100 IMDb movies. I think I need a more updated version because I've definitely watched a couple more of these. So usually I have a lot more patience to sit down and watch one movie than a whole, ent whole entire series. Um, I am team Oppenheimer versus Barbie. So I will be trying to go to that. And then I just had to include my favorite movie growing up, which was Jurassic Park. Um, if you have any questions about the kind of kid I was growing up, you can just watch it and pay attention to this little guy because that really describes who I was pretty perfectly. And lastly, I think that I'm always on a mission to find the best food. I really have yet to find a lot of, I really haven't had the opportunity yet to explore the Minneapolis cuisine, um, but that pretty much ranges from Asian to Mexican to pretty much anything you can kind of set your mind to. And then lastly, kind of M4 before um, I came for general surgery residency. Danny had the opportunity to go to Paris and that was great. Um, right about here is where a bird, um, unfortunately took a crap on me and which is a thing that always happens every time I go to Europe, even though I've only been there twice, it's happened both times. Um, so I don't think the EU really wants me there, but yeah. And so far, um, residency has been everything that I've hoped it to be, um, learning a lot on nights. I was really shocked the other day when I walked into a conference and hustled, the hospital was hustling and bustling. That was the most people I've ever seen so far. Um, and then why Minnesota? Because I think that um, this program really allows you to really 
go in any, direct, any direction that you want to go in and supportive. Um, if you want to be rural, if you want to be, you know, one of the most academic surgeons you can be, it gives you the broad range of experiences I was looking for. And it also just has a bunch of friendly faces, which I've grown to meet over the course of the past couple of weeks so far. Thank you. I wonder if we should put together a list of food challenges that are uh, around. It sounds like we got a few people who might be interested in those. The um, uh, I think uh, you have to have the Big Bamboo Burger at uh, Pine Brook Lodge. All right, welcome. All right. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? I'm Michael McKernan. Thanks for giving me a few minutes of your time. One of the prelim residents here. It's a picture of my family, uh, my dad, my mom, and my sister at graduation just a little while ago down in Madison. So I grew up in Mount Hoare, Wisconsin, about 30 minutes west of Madison. Uh, it's a Norwegian uh, heritage town and our claim to fame is having the Duluth Trading Company headquarters on Main Street. Uh, most people remember when they come to Mount Horeb, uh, they remember the trolls. Uh, we have hand-carved life-size trolls outside of each one of our small businesses. Um, and honestly, it's terrifying as a kid. This is the tooth fairy troll. And going to the dentist was already scary enough. And then this was just outside the door. So that's burned into my memory. Uh, growing up, uh, I grew up with my sister, Jessica. Uh, she's three years older than I am. Uh, she's my best friend growing up and still is. Uh, she's an oncology pharmacist at the UW and uh, was probably my first uh, real reason for thinking about science uh, seriously in medicine uh, as well. Uh, growing up, I thought I'd be a construction worker. My dad always uh, worked in construction and uh, built gas stations, and that's one of my favorite pictures. Uh, with the, the protection cap on. And then uh, my dad grew up wrestling. Uh, he was a badger. And uh, he tried to get me to go the wrestling route too. And this is one of the few pictures of me wrestling, but I got my butt kicked so many times I quit when I was young. Uh, so I turned to fishing and soccer as my two primary ways of, of, of exercising and being outside. And thankfully, my dad and I have been able to share uh, fishing as one of our favorite mutual uh, interests. A couple of my other favorite things from growing up, uh, by far and away, my mom's cooking. Uh, it's just the smell of home to me. Uh, she's an amazing cook. And I was really grateful that she was at home for most of my childhood. Um, and then I have a picture of the backyard. My mom took this picture probably two years ago in fall. And uh, it's just looking out over the hills in Mount Horeb. And one of my favorite parts of the state and definitely where my love for nature comes from. So I went to high school in Madison, uh, played soccer my entire life uh, from the time I could walk, still play pretty regularly now. Uh, that was probably my biggest uh, time commitment in high school. Uh, I used to have the Justin Bieber hair in high school. That was the thing. Had to have the hair coming out of the back of the hockey helmet too. So I played hockey growing up. Um, that was one of my first uh, trips up to Minnesota, coming up here for hockey. Uh, my coaches called it the humbling trip. So we'd come up here about a week before uh, season started and we get our butts kicked for about three days. We wouldn't feel so cocky going back down to Madison. Um, and then we'd start the season off on a better foot. That was the theory at least. Um, so I didn't love Minnesota growing up. It was always a bad trip, but um, in retrospect, I think there was something to it. And then during the summers in high school, uh, I used to go up to the Boundary Waters. Uh, that was my other favorite time coming up here. Probably went up to the Boundary Waters over 10 times uh, over the past 15, 20 years. It's one of my favorite places. This was my summer job from freshman year of high school all the way through the middle of college. I uh, replaced pool liners uh, with my dad and a few friends. And uh, it was one of the most satisfying jobs in the world. This is what a pool looks like when you get there in the morning. And then this is what it looks like when you leave. Uh, it taught me a lot of good lessons about uh, seeing a job to the end and also trying to convince uh, middle-aged folks that an 18-year-old can 
take a job like this and actually do something good with it. So lots of business lessons from a young age. I went out east for college, went to Boston College and uh, met some of my best friends. Uh, the picture on the left is me with three of my uh, old roommates, three of my current best friends, and they were all in my uh, bridal party as well. And uh, studied biology on the pre-medical track. Uh, and most of my time outside of school, I uh, went to these two pictures in the middle and the right. I was part of an acapella group out there. I got coerced into it by this guy, Kamau. He joined as a freshman and he basically wouldn't let me uh, think about not joining it as a sophomore. So I went out and auditioned and we sang lots of the old uh, barbershop tunes and wore the blazers and the ties and had a blast for three years doing that. This is probably the best part of college for me. Uh, this is me and my wife, Ashlyn. Uh, we met as sophomores. Uh, this is all due to the pre-medical track, had to take calculus and uh, she was sitting next to me in calculus and that was all she wrote. So uh, this is our first ever picture. I'm so happy we have it. I love that it's blurry. It just captures the, the moment. Um, during our junior year, I uh, headed off to Australia, went to Melbourne uh, to study abroad and did all the adrenaline a few old things you can imagine. I love my time over there. And then I uh, came back and had my first job uh, in healthcare. I was pre-medicine, but I hadn't really been in a hospital yet. And so I started working as a scribe uh, in the emergency department out there and uh, did that for about a year while I was a student. I worked a lot of overnights, which was a very realistic view into what medicine uh, really is as a trainee. Um, and then I also trained scribes in the trauma bay for six months. Uh, it's where all my medical terminology uh, knowledge came from. And I'm pretty grateful for that at this point. Um, I took a couple years after graduating uh, too, uh, between undergrad and medical school. I lived and worked in Boston, uh, worked at Brigham and Women's Hospital in the trauma department there and did quality improvement and patient safety research. Uh, it was two of my favorite years. It was awesome to have a paycheck and just live in the city with my friends and my, my wife. Um, culminated in my one and only marathon, which was a Boston marathon. It was a dream of mine uh, ever since I had moved out there and I was able to do this uh, for charity. Uh, one of my greatest achievements was raising $10,000. I thought it'd be impossible, but somehow uh, people just kept supporting me throughout a full year of training and one of the best days of my life. Um, and then right before medical school, my wife and I took a, a European road trip and hostel hopped for about a month and used some of our remaining funds from working for two years. And it was a blast. So on to medical school, I came back to Madison uh, at the UW and it's a picture of my family uh, at white coat ceremony. Uh, we with me with my roommate, Sean, uh, we actually went to high school together and then met up again for medical school, which was really cool. And then uh, us on match day, this is my wife and I. Uh, so I matched uh, into interventional radiology at Mayo and she matched into ob at Mayo. We were really excited about the couples match and then for me to be able to be here for my prelim surgery year. And then this is just a picture down at the Memorial Union again on graduation day, being pretty happy. These are all the other pictures from medical school where my time was really spent. Um, was in a long distance relationship for four years. My wife was out in Philly uh, for medical school. So lots of FaceTime, uh, lots of trips, uh, 48 hour to 72 hour flights uh, for balls and formals. Um, and then we got engaged during my M3 year out in Pittsburgh on a super rainy day that spoiled all my outdoor plans. Um, and then these are other pictures from um, medical school. So played soccer every week with a pretty big group of med students, uh, worked with a bunch of uh, fly fishing uh, folks on uh, trout stream habitat, did that every weekend. Um, and then recently went on my bachelor party down to uh, Louisville to do the bourbon trail, which was a blast. Um, and then lastly, uh, did this thing called Dr. Quest, which was basically a career exploration podcast that we did during the COVID years and I'm really interested in audio editing and did that for that project. So these are the past three months. Uh, got married in April out in Philly and then took our honeymoon down to Costa Rica. I uh, spent a week on the beach and then spent a week up in the rainforest. Once we got back, uh, my wife and I love to travel and so we didn't stop. Uh, we got back, hopped in the car and we took an out west road trip. Stopped at about five or six 
uh, national parks, uh, met some friends along the way. Um, this is a picture of us with my friend Brian out in LA. Uh, we went to Las Vegas together for the first time, which was a blast. And then uh, my dad and I went out to Montana and did some fly fishing, which has been a dream trip of ours since we were young. This is all the other uh, kind of life activities and hobbies that fills up my time. Uh, love to go skiing and snowboarding, typically out in Vermont. Um, my wife, thankfully, loves fishing. I'm still waiting on the day that she's saying this just to make me happy, but she goes with me and uh, we love being able to do that around this area too. And I have a picture of morels. If anybody's ever been morel hunting, it's something I love to do in May and love to cook. I'm a massive English soccer fan. My team is Arsenal. I spend every single weekend watching them during season. And this is a picture of me at a Flamingos game in Madison, which is a semi-pro soccer team with a pretty big supporters, uh, supporter group. And then this included a picture of uh, one of my newer guitars and then also some audio editing software. Uh, it's probably my best uh, like balance to work is turning to music and really like to make my own music and then do audio editing for podcasts and really anything. And these are my research interests here. I had some text up here, it's not showing up, but um, throughout medical school, did some research in hepatobiliary interventions and imaging, uh, specifically percutaneous uh, biliary imaging. This is a, uh, a percutaneous endoscopy of the biliary tree. I think it's pretty amazing what interventional radiologists can do through the skin, just uh, minimally invasive. Um, also really interested in interventional oncology is a picture of Y90 embolization for hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, and I've also been able to uh, work on some lymphatic projects too uh, for interventional radiology. Um, and lastly, I'd say quality improvement just within procedural care, uh, making procedures uh, more safe, more efficient is something I'm uh, interested in. And then why uh, Minnesota? So. There's a couple of things that come to mind. Uh, one, definitely location. My wife is up here. Uh, we couples match and I wanted to be close to her, wanted to be close to family. Um, two is uh, really wanted to go do a surgery year somewhere where I would get the real surgical experience, be in the ICU, rotate at a few different hospitals and you know get exposed to everything and really develop a good knowledge base before heading off to IR. Um, and then third and most important to me, is the people. I grew up in Wisconsin. I grew up around the Midwest, Minnesota. And I know the people who come to programs like this, uh, who teach at programs like this are good people, the great teachers, and hopefully great friends too. So I was really looking forward to coming here and looking forward to meeting everybody. Thank you. Thank you. That's, this is reminding me about the Strava group. I think Chesney posted, did you post something new in the Strava group for the new folks who um, are just arriving? There's a general surgery residency Strava group that has some challenges on occasion. So um, make sure to connect with that group uh, if you're interested in that. All right, next is Dr. Schmitz, ready? All right, hey everyone, I'm Mike. I'm one of the uh, general surgery prelims here. I originally applied ortho, but unfortunately didn't match because I read too many books. Oh. So uh, <laughs> how do you hide a dollar from an orthopedic surgeon, right? Um, I'm also feeling super clean after spending all that time immersed in soap. So I got that going for me. I grew up in Prior Lake, which is about 40 minutes south of the cities. But um, if you don't know where it is, you might be able to look outside at night and see the blinding lights of Mystic Lake Casino, which prevented me from getting any sleep as a kid. Um, in the top left is a photo of me reaching my peak. It's basically been a steady downhill slope from this point forward. Um, in the bottom right is a picture of me, my mom, and my sister. Um, these two were really uh, kind of my role models and influ influenced me to pursue a career in healthcare in the first place. 
My mom was originally a nurse and then later worked for the pharmaceutical company GlaxoSmithKline. And then my sister was a professor of clinical pharmacology at UW. So had some pretty big shoes to fill there. And then I went to St. Thomas Academy, which is a all male private Catholic military high school. So essentially the polar opposite of a culturally diverse environment. Um, on the bottom are a couple of photos of my graduation at the cathedral in St. Paul. For college, I also went to UW-Madison, uh, mostly because I wanted to be able to uh, watch and cheer for a halfway decent football team, which Minnesota didn't have, <laughs> um, but uh, ultimately had a great time here. Uh, after graduating with my $80,000 uh, degree, I was able to land the illustrious customer service position at Starbucks. Um, worked here for, for a few months. I'm still trying to decide whether or not I should have stuck with my original career trajectory here. Um, but I can confirm that spelling names incorrectly is part of the orientation training. Uh, UW is also where I met my fiance, Tintashi, who is Tibetan. Uh, I didn't really know anything about Tibetan culture before I met her. So it's been uh, super fun over the past eight years or so, uh, getting to know more about the culture, uh, participating in the local community here and in Madison but most importantly, eating the incredibly delicious food. Um, I also took a trip to Dharamsal, which is a town in Northern India at the foot of, at the, foot of the Himalayan mountains where she grew up. Uh, it's also where the Dalai Lama currently resides. So I had the opportunity to meet him. Uh, this is a photo of us meeting as well as the rest of the group that met him on that day. Um, honestly, one of the most humbling experiences I've ever had. A couple other photos of my travels. Uh, on the left is a photo of me and my dad in uh, Munich during Oktoberfest. Um, would highly recommend adding this to your bucket list if you haven't been before. And then on the right is a photo of me in Hungary, which was also a blast. Um, and then lastly, I would include a photo of my sister's dog who helped me survive medical school. And then on the right is a photo of my white coat ceremony. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. We went over a bit, so uh, please head to the next um, educational opportunity. Thank you. 